Today we continue Bujinga Soda. First, we need to recite Bujinga Soda Pali. <clears throat> Samsari Samsarantanam Savadoka Vinasane Sadadame Jabojinge Marasena Bamadane Pojedwaye Jime Saddam Diva Amoda Godamam Ajadi Majrabya Dame Amadani Bayangadam Eva Madi Gunu Bedam Nega Guna Singaham Ozadinja Imamadam Bojeng in Jabana Mahi Bojeng as a decent garden. Damana we jay or datam. We the ambiti basadi. Bojeng Samadhi Vika Bhujinga Sadde Te Samadha Sina Munina Samadha Khatta Bhavita Bholi Khatta Samadha Diya Vinyaya Nivanaya Chabodhiya Ede nasi jawi chenam, suti de hodu sabeda. Ega same same natam, maugala nancha gasabam, ilane dogi de de sam, pujing esada de sayi. Deja da vinan de duam Roga mo chen du ding hane Ede nasi jawi jenam Sudi te ho du savedam Ega da da maraja bi Kele nyena bi bili da Jona dere na danye wam, pena bidwa na sadaram, samo de swana abadam, dama wota si tana zom, ede na si jawi jenam, sudi de hodu sabadam. Pina de java dam, Tina nam be mehesinam, Mega had dagi lesa wam, But nobody dam, madam. Hidden as a jawi jenam, Suti de hodus abeda. English translation, having known by way of experience the seven kinds of dharma called factors of enlightenment, which destroy all suffering of beings who wander through the samsara rounds of rebirths, which defeat the army of Mara, the evil one, the excellent person were liberated from the three kinds of existence. 
They have reached Nirvana, where there is no rebirth, aging, disease, death, and danger. Oh, good people, let us recite this Bhujinga Sutta, which is endowed with the formation attributes, which gives not a few benefits, and which is like a medicine and mantra. These seven factors are enlightenment, namely mindfulness, investigations of dharma, effort or energy, zest, tranquility, concentration and equanimity, which are well expounded by the all-seeing sage, promote when practice repeatedly penetrations of the truth, cessation of suffering, and knowledge of the path. By this utterance of truth, may there always be happiness for you. Once when the Lord saw Mokulana and Gasaba being a world in suffering, he reached the seven factors of enlightenment. They, having rejoiced at the discourse, immediately were free from the disease. By this utterance of truth, may there always be happiness to you. Once when the kings of the Dharma was oppressed by disease, he had the venerable Chonda recite the discourse resistlessly, having rejected the discourse, was immediately cured of the disease. By this utterance of truth, may there always happiness to you. The disease of the three great sages that were eradicated reached the stage of never occurring again, like the mental developments eradicated by the path. By this utterance of truth, may there always be happiness to you. Seven Bojinga, Siti Sam Bojinga, Damawijia, Widia, and PT. The commentary mentions 11 condition for PT. Number one, Buddha no city, recollecting the qualities of Buddha. Number two, Dhamma no city, recollecting the qualities of Dhamma. We finish Buddha and Dhamma. And number three, Sangha no Siddhi, recollecting the qualities of Sangha. <clears throat> Sangha, qualities so deep no. Practicing very well in the Holy Order are those who put effort in eradications of kilesa, mental defilements, such as loba, dosa, and moha, and so on. <clears throat> so three kilesa, we take a kilesa, transgressive mental defilements, priyotana kilesa, obsessive, mental defilements, and nusaya kilesa, latent defilements. So Sangha have to practice three training, sila, samadhi and binya, morality, concentration, and wisdom. In this way, morality will prevent mental defilements from transgressing Verbally and physically. 
if Sangha develops concentration, that concentration will prevent mental defilements. Obsessive mental defilements from being active mentally. And Sangha have to practice Vinya wisdom. <clears throat> When Sangha practice Vipassana, Vipassana is knowledge, we prevent latent defilements from arising in any sense objects he observes. That is Aramana Lucia Kilesa. Vipassana can prevent Aramana Nusya Kilesa, Kilesa from rising and lying dormant in sense object. And when Sangha practice completely, he attain mega enlightenment, that mega enlightenment we uproot mental defilements once and for all. So we can contemplate the qualities of the Sangha. Subhadipano practicing very well in the Holy Order are those who put effort in eradications of mental defilements. <clears throat> Sangha is not just an individual in a yellow robe. Sangha is anyone who are endowed with such qualities as practicing well for eradications of mental defilements. <clears throat> How about yogi? Of course, yogi also practicing, yogi developing sila samadhi pinya to eradicate mental defilements. So yogi are also partially sangha. So normally we, we consider sangha is an individual in a, in a yellow robe. Of course, some merits you can gain by being respect to someone, some monks in a yellow robe. But the recollections of Sangha is to appreciate the qualities of morality, concentration, and wisdom rather than his monastic appearance. So noble disciple, of the Blessed One, Here means uh, not only one monk, now you see not only four monks. Noble disciple means the, all the monks as a whole who have followed the Buddha's teaching throughout history. So Sangha uh, not referred to one Sangha, two, two Sangha, four Sangha, five Sangha, one thousand, ten thousand. Sangha, no. Sangha means all the monks as a whole who have 
follow the Buddha teachings throughout history since the Buddha's lifetime. So Sangha includes all the monks from the chief disciple, uh, Venerable Sariputra and Venerable Mahmoglana during the lifetime of the Buddha to those, those Sangha you see today. So Sangha have been practicing morality, concentration, and wisdom carefully, and so they are honored as those who practice well. Supatipano. And the mental defilements such as loba, dosa, moha, greed, anger, and delusion, etc., cause damage to our own well beings and others also. So these mental defilements can also lead to woeful states and several kinds of suffering throughout this cycle of uh, rebirth, cycle of samsara. So Sangha, including Venerable Sariputra and Venerable Mahmoglana at the beginning of the Holy Order, have practiced these three training, sila training, samadhi training, and pinya training, morality, concentration, and wisdom to eradicate mental defilements. So how long it take for Sangha to attain the Dharma? It is due to the Paramis. Venerable Mahmoglana practice Vipassana meditation for seven days and became an Arahant on the eighth day. Venerable Sariputra practice for 15 days and became an Arahant. You have to practice more. So they had to practice Sila Samari and Pinya in order, in order to eradicate Lava, Dosa, and Moha. A venerable Mahakasapa also took seven days for his spiritual accomplishment. A venerable Sona, among other Sanghas, practice with remarkable effort. Sona ordained from a wealthy family. He's so energetic. He practiced walking meditation in the cemetery, cemetery so strenuously that he broke his soul smearing blood everywhere in the walking pl place. But when Ravasona did not give up, he continued his meditation with a, a heroic effort. And as for Venerable Mahasiva, he took as long as uh, 30 years to become an Arahant. So nowadays, some yogis practice few weeks, 
Here we practice a one, one month and also some practice two months, three months like this. And they are likely to complain about slow progress in their practice. So now here you see Venerable Mahasiva took uh, 30 years to become an Arahant. So how Mahasiva practice, we need to explain. Mahasiva was very learned monk. He taught 18 groups of students. He was a really great teacher and especially learned in the Dipitakat. As many as 30,000 bhikkhus attained Arathut just following his advice. One day, one of his students reviewed the good qualities in himself. So he was Arahan, so he reviewed very good qualities in himself. And then he thought of his teacher, Mahasiva. So he reviewed his teacher, Venerable Mahasiva. The student found that the teacher, Mahasiva, was still a Pudujana, a warling, and had not yet attained a Rathut. So the student went to, uh, went to teach his teacher, Masiwa a lesson. He was Arahan, so he flew in the sky and he, he went there. So when he had come to the teacher, Masiwa, the teacher asked him, what do you come for? And the student Arahan said, Bandi, I want to hear a Dhamma talk from you. Teacher Mahat Siva said, I have no time, I'm very busy. He said, and the student Arahan said, one day I will ask you when you go to the village for Armstrong. And Masiwa said, no, there will be many people who will ask many questions at that time. I'm busy. And the student Arhan kept asking for an appointment, but every time the teacher was too busy for him, And at the end, the student Arahan told Venerable uh, Mahasiva, Bande, don't you have time for at least two or three sittings? If you don't have any time, you won't even have time to die. You are always busy. You are like the back of a ch chair. You are relying upon by other people, other students, but you cannot rely on yourself. I don't want anything more from you. The student Arhan to him like this, and then he flew into the sky. Now the teacher Masiwa knew and he was moved 
and decided to practice meditation on event. So Masiwa Thera thought he would become an Arhan in two or three days because he was very knowledgeable. So he did not tell anybody about, about this. However, whenever Masiva practiced, uh, he could not attain Ratut within two or three days. Then he continued practice. Uh, he passed through one rainy season, one wasa, three months. At the end of the rainy season, he stay could not attain anything. So Masi had some doubt. I tried very hard, but I could not attain anything. So maybe I sleep, I sleep three or four hours per day. It is not beneficial for me. So he removed his bed. And he practiced only three postures, sitting meditation, walking meditation, and standing meditation. So he practiced only three postures. He continued to practice. Stay, he could not attain anything. Then he started to feel sorry. So he wept. And he wept after one year practice. He could not get, he could not attain anything. After two years practice, he could not attain anything and he wept. So he wept and wept and wept and practiced for 29 years. He was so depressed. So in the 30th year, at the end of the rainy season, he was still a warling, he was still a Pudujana, and he had not attained anything. So he have big doubt. Maybe this life I will not attain any enlightenment. So Mahasiva became very sad, uh, he wept aloud. So at that time, a deity wanted to remind the Tera. So deity approached him, and deity also wept. So when we when Mahatera Masiwa had the crying. He asks, Who is weeping here? And the deity answered, I'm a deity. And Masiwa asks, Why are you weeping? And the deity answered, Yes, Bande, I saw you weeping, and I thought I might get one or two attainments, sort of body mega, sagragami mega, just by crying. Did he said to Masiwa? Now Masiwa was deeply moved and said to himself, Masiwa, now even the deity is making jokes about you. It is not proper for you to be depressed. 
it is not proper for you to be said. He reminded himself. So Mahasiva removed his sadness and he continued to practice. Finally, he became an Arahant after 30 years practice. Although Mahasiva was well versed in the Tipitakat, it took him 30 years to become an Arahant. His obsession with this sorrowful feeling with respect to uh, non-worldling things during meditation had been an obstacle to his attainment. So yogi need to be a yogi need to understand. Sometimes yogi cannot meditate and as much as yogi try, your mind does not stay on the present object. And yogi become discouraged and yogi become depressed. So that is Nira Misa Dokha Vedana, unworldly, unpleasant feeling. Many yogis report, sometimes meditation is very good. Yogi have reached some very good stage. A yogi hope for more, better knowledge. And then yogi have fallen from the stage. Sometimes yogi have to practice for many weeks and the practice is uh, the progress is very slow. A yogi fee set, a yogi fee depressed. So such kinds of feeling must be noted as sadness, sadness, or depressed, depressed. And of course, if you note, sure, it will, you, it will be overcome, and then you have more progress. So Venerable Mahasiva had to practice for 30 years to become an Arahant. It is really inspiring to recollect the heroic effort made by these noble ones, such as Venerable Sariputra, Venerable Mahamoglana, Venerable Sona, Venerable Kasapa, and now here, Venerable Masiwa, etc. So, yogis practice in this center many times, but not like Masiwa for 30 years, only maybe maximum 20 years. So we should not complain. We should not complain about our slow progress in our practice. So in this teaching, there were many, many practitioners, many Sangha who practice strenuously for years, some even for decades. So they devoted all their time and energy to the development of their Sila Samadhi and Binya in order to eradicate their mental defilements, Loba, Dosa, and Moha, etc. That is why it is good for us to recollect the qualities of Sangha, Supadipanna, etc.
By recollecting how strenuously the noble disciple of the Buddha, like Venerable Sariputra, Venerable etc., practice until they became enhanced, we may feel inspired and arouse joy and delight in this Dhamma in their practice, their way arouse Piti Pamuja. So Yogi will feel inspired if you contemplate on the fact that you have also been practicing this training, this Dhamma, this meditation that will contribute to the eradications of mental defilements. <coughs> Before yogi practice, yogi may only observe moral precepts. At home, you observe minimum five precepts. but you don't have the power of concentration and power of wisdom yet. But when you come for retreat, there's little chance to break your moral precepts. There is no chance to break your moral precepts. So Yogi, just put great effort in development of your concentration and wisdom that would help reduce Lava, Dosa and Moha to absolute minimum. So having in this way contemplated, Yogi will become gratified, arousing your Piti Sambujinga, joy and light to affect us. So there are nine qualities of the Sangha. We have to recollect, we have to rejoice. Can you open your book? Page number 12. <coughs> Qualities of the Sangha, Sangha Guna, can you follow me? Subhadipano, Bhagavato, Savaga Sangha, Ujubhadipano, Bhagavato, Savaga Sangha, Nyaya Bhadipano, Bhagavata Savaka Sangam Samiji Vidipano Bhagavata Savaka Sangam Yadidam Chattari Purisa Yugani Atapurisa Bhagalam Esa Bhagavata Savaga Sangam Ahuneyam Ahuneyam Dakineyam Injalikaraniyam Anodaram Ponyakitam Logasam Translation Practicing well is the Buddha's disciple. Practicing sincerely is the Buddha's disciple. Practicing to be enlightened is the Buddha's disciple. 
Practicing admirably is the Buddha's disciple. So yogis need to be gratified. You are practicing very well. You practice in the true way. You practice in a straight way. You very straight. And you practice to be enlightened. You practice for nibbana, cessation of all suffering. And you practice in the proper way. Proper way. So yogi are partially a sangha because you practice to eradicate your, all your mental defilements. You are training, you are practicing three training, morality, concentration, wisdom. And there are eight individuals. Can you follow me? There are four pairs of person. All the eight individuals. These Buddha disciples are worthy of offerings as for gods and goddesses, worthy of meal offerings as prepared for honorable guests, worthy of offering for the benefits of the donors, deceased relatives, worthy of reverential salutation, the incomparable feats of merits for the world. So nine qualities of the Sangha, you, uh, you are also practicing. So Sangha uh, Nusati, we finish and then we go to Sila Nusati. So yogis are also recommended to recollect your own virtue, own sila. According to Visodhi Mega, Hawatame Akandani Silani. Indeed, my virtues are undone. Achidani. My virtues are unrent. Asablani, my virtues are unblotched. Akamasani, my virtues are untainted or unmortal. Pujisani, my virtues are liberated. When you pasatani, my virtues are praised by the wise people. Aparamatani, my virtues are not adhered to. Samadhi, samvitani, kani, my virtues are conducive to concentration. So according to Visodhi Mega, whether you are a lay person or monastics, you should recollect how long and how virtuously you have undertaken moral precepts. So in daily life, you also observe sila, But in daily life, observing sila, you act and speak without mindfulness, as always. Of course, you may not break any precepts in, in daily life. But here, you come for retreat. Not five precepts, you take eight precepts. You refrain from killing, stealing, sexual activities, telling lies, intoxicating drinks and drugs, and eating 
meal in wrong time, dancing, singing, using the luxurious beds and seats. So not five precepts, you undertake a precepts. So your morality, your sila is pure, especially during the intensive meditation retreat. But in daily life, when you observe sila, there can be times when you become uh, lustful or hateful. That won't mean uh, breaking any precepts, but daily life uh, observing precepts is not very pure. Your mind is not very pure indeed in daily life. Uh, uh, taking precepts. But when you come to retreat, during an intense retreat, your sila can be very pure because you know you have to be mindful all the time. You have to be watchful of your mind and body continuously. You take the precepts and noble silence, nothing to talk. And then you sit and just note the breathing to get concentration, rising, falling, rising, falling, no wandering minds. But when wandering mind, when unwholesome thoughts arise, note, thinking, thinking, wandering, wandering. You note and then unwholesome thoughts, you overcome. So you don't let them transgress or that mental state, that unwholesome mental state do not last long. So your sila can be very pure during this intense retreat. Most probably purer than it is in your daily life precepts. Daily life you take five precepts, but uh, uh, taking precepts in the retreat is purer than it is in your daily life practice, daily life sila. So it is very inspiring. Your sila would be significantly uh, pure for, for here for one month. If you will practice uh, two months, three months, your sila is very pure when you practice a uh, intensive retreat. So we saw the mega say, Oh, what the me silani akandani. Akandani means Anton Sila. That means you do not violate the first precepts and the last precepts. If you violate the first and last precepts, your Sila uh, is done, is, is broken. And Shwasila is 
Ajidani, that means a rent, that means you do not violate the middle precepts if your precepts uh, broken in the middle middle it is called jaita rent now you are see you do not violate the middle precepts so that is Achidani Silani. And Asablani, you do not violate two or three constitutive precepts. That is Amblotch Sila. If you uh, violate two or three constitutive uh, precepts, your sila is blotch. And your sila is uh, akamasani, that means untainted or un, uh, unmortal. That means you do not violate precepts here, another there. That is tainted. When your sila is tainted, it is uh, it is uh, kamasani or mortal or tainted. Now your sila is uh, not tainted. So you need to reflect your sila in this way. You do not violate the first and last precepts. You do not violate the middle precepts. You do not violate two or three constitutive uh, precepts. You do not violate precepts here and another there. So you can be gratified with your sila if you have uh, observed moral precepts in this way for the longer period, you would feel even more gratified with your sila. So by recollecting your virtues in this way, the pity, positivity, and joy and delight will arise in you. And when this pity arise, you note it as pity or happy, happy or delight, delight. You need to observe and you can even develop your progressive stage of vipassana insight. And by noting the kinds of BD, you can gain megapala and nibbana. And we saw the mega say bujisani. That means my sila is indeed liberated. That means your sila is liberated from the slavery of craving. Sometimes if the, he perform meritorious deeds, he, he, do char he perform charity, he observes sila, and he practice meditation, wishing for so and so worldly bliss, then his merit is considered to be enslaved by craving. So if he undertake sila wishing for human bliss or celestial bliss or very enjoyable life, then it would mean he of the precepts as commanded by craving, or in other words, his sila is enslaved by a craving. However, as a yogi, 
you observe Sila wishing for what? Wishing for Megapala and Nibbana. That is why you always say, you always wish, you always vow to undertake your moral precepts. Mention Idam Mesilam, Megapala Nyanasa, Piche Ahodu. May my sila be conducive to Megapala enlightenment. So in this way, your sila would be conducive to Nibbana, the liberation from torturous cycle of suffering, aging, sickness, and death. Of course, it is necessary to say this this phrase verbally, but uh, what important is to keep this uh, as our aspiration. And then also after performing all kinds of merits, we 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 often say whenever we perform any meritorious deeds, idame punyam, aswakayam waham hotu. May this merit lead to the cessations of asawa. May this merit lead to the cessations of kankas. So this passage also serves the same purpose as the Idame Silam Megapala Nyanasa Piche Hodu. So the cessation of Kankas, that is Megapala and Nirvana, should be our aspiration so that our merits can get free from slavery of attachment. In the same way, the sila we have taken with aspiration for Megapala and Nibbana is considered to be free from slavery of attachment. In this sense, all yogis should recollect that virtues sila you have take, undertaken is free from slavery then there would arise uh, gratification in you, there will arise pity. Pity. So we will continue tomorrow. We have to stop our discourse for today. May you develop seven factors of enlightenment Sati Sambhujanga, Dhamma Vijaya, Viriya, Bidhi, Pasati, Samadhi, and Upika Sambhujanga. May you practice Sati Bhutana Vipassana meditation. By practicing Sati Bhutana Vipassana meditation, by developing seven factors, I like to mention seven Bhujanga, by noting, rising, falling, sitting, touching, hearing, smelling, stretching, bending continuously and meticulously. May all yogis be liberated from all suffering. May all yogis realize the real peace in the very near future. So.